with part three of our berm and swale project. Now, if you watched the last video, you know that we actually got the whole thing rough cut in, the backhoe came out and did that work. Today though, we need to go back, measure and investigate a few things before we do any handwork. But first. This is our first big significant monsoon. So I'm out here looking at the swale that we just put in a couple days ago. And look at this. <laughs> so much water. I've been out, um, we haven't done a lot of handwork yet. So on the part where the swale begins from our land, where it starts sloping into the swale, some of that still has dirt up on the edge, creating a mini berm. So I've been going through cutting out areas to let the water go into the swale. So I'm soaked, but it's been worth it. The important thing to do at this point in time is go out while it's raining, look and see what needs to be done. Um, see what is working, what's not, take lots of videos so that we can improve it and make it better in the days to come. So this is just so exciting. The more we looked at that north side of the swale, it definitely wasn't filling up right. So we called Rudy, he came back with his laser level, and we had to do some tests. What's up? Rudy's here. Hello, everybody. Oops. Uh, yep. In case you hadn't noticed, we're doing laser level stuff. <laughs> so we cut in the berm swale the other day, um, but we're going to go back and check a few areas to make sure everything's the right level. Mm -hmm. um, check our spillway, and then we're going to maybe investigate why part of it wasn't filling up during the rain. Yeah. I think we figured it out, but we're gonna go double check and yeah. see what that was. So let's laser level it. Laser level it. Let's laser level it. He had to start with our zero point at the spillway since that's the lowest exit for any overflowing water. We just want to find the relative difference between this point and your, your um, what is it, your driveway crossing there. Um, Right. I guess we want to make sure that that there's not a lower area in the berm, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. um, when we look at this stuff, water follows the path of least resistance mm -hmm. or gravity. Right. And so that's why these laser levels are so effective, is they tell us exactly where the gravity is at, right. where the lowest points are at, and they tell us exactly where the water would be running. It's just up to us to make sure we capture all the low points. Because if we miss one, it's gonna then pull up there. Yeah, it'll pull of there. Here. Yeah, so yeah. we just want to make yeah. sure when we inspect the site, we walk each point of it, mm -hmm. and once we see every point, we can figure out. Okay, um, this is what this point is at. This is what this point is at. next step was to check the culvert near the solar shed. 
Okay, so we came to this part where we've got the culvert where we drive over, and it's actually like right at the same level as the spillway. Yeah. Um, so what that means is, is that we just want to take our berm here and we want to extend it all the way across and build this area up just a little bit so that it doesn't become a second spillway. Yeah. <laughs> we just want one spillway and we want it over there. You're, you're going to want to protect this whole feature. Yeah. Um, so when this thing fills up, um, we also want to test this area here as well. You can tell we're not hearing any sound. Right. An easy way you can check out is this, you see? Yeah, you can tell it's a little higher. So this whole area, yeah, we're going to want to rise this up mm -hmm. from basically this point all the way to that point. Okay. Just so that, you know, if you get, say, a hundred year storm, which we already know from data is about f almost four inches of, of rain here. Right. And depending on the intensity of that, mm -hmm. the intensity is what depicts, oh, well, how much safety do we can need it to hold? Build? Yeah, can it hold that much water back? In talking to Rudy, we realized the reason our south swell was working so well was that the area up above it was very cleared from our building activities and running meat birds. Because of the contour of the swell, there was also a very large surface area that was feeding into it. And that's, yeah, that's the interesting thing with our soils, like the difference between a healthy vegetated area, and then you also have hydrologic group soil A, mm -hmm. which is the highest infiltrating soil. Yeah. But once you start compacting that stuff, like the runoff rate like multiplies right, yeah. versus the healthy grassy stands that you have there. Huh. So you get a lot more runoff in this. But over time, especially as you heal this area, as yeah. you revegetate, as you restore it, um, that'll decrease the amount of flow coming in here. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll reduce your peak flow. And the peak flow is just the amount that actually runs off. Rudy was pretty sure that our contour was correct, so we took the laser level around and checked a bunch of different points to make sure we were on level. We're going to be walking around today and just checking levels just to see, one, um, if things were, how things were dug and if whether or not they were dug at the same contour or where, right. what are the pooling areas versus the, the not pooling areas. But we did a great job um, just uh, marking out the, the line for where this contour was. So right. I trust that we have a good contour line. Yeah. This is all level. And the question we're answering today is, why is this one filling up so much and that one not? When, right. you know, based on the models that I ran during your design process was that this whole area is getting a good even capture. Right, and at this point, it seems like from about here over, it's filling up pretty evenly, but then from the solar shed up towards that back corner, yeah, it's like dry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so something's stopping it, stopping that water from getting to it yeah. somehow. Yeah. So that's what we got to figure out. It's the thing with the design process. We hope to capture all of these little um, nuances in the landscape as we do it. Right. But that's where the long and thoughtful observation piece, one of like the first sort of tenets of a sustainable regenerative design mm -hmm. is the long thoughtful observation of the landscape so you can see how are things flowing right because you know we have these topo maps that show us at a certain scale what should be happening right. but then you <laughs> when know it doesn't you're like well okay <laughs> yeah. you have neighbors up above you who right. are trenching things in different ways or building up little mounds or right. redirecting drainage in different ways that we can't capture the topography sometimes won't capture either yeah, so. so this would be a good way for anybody else that's like trying to figure this stuff out if it's not working as expected we're going to go investigate and hopefully it'll help you try to see like what might be stopping that flow from from going the direction or filling up in places that you expected it to So that looks a lot higher there, doesn't it? It's lower. Or lower? Yeah. You know, we're pretty much there. <laughs> so this point's the same as that. This is actually lower. This is lower. Yeah, see, this is where it's deep.
One important thing that I learned today is that we actually don't want these swales to hold water for a long time. We've gotten a lot of comments of people suggesting we like line the bottom of the swales or put some material down so that we can really catch that water. But what we actually want to happen is we want it to soak in quickly. When I first installed mine, my property, ours is the same length as yours. Um, it took like upwards to one to three days to drain. Yeah. And now after the last rain, it looks way different because we have our seeded berm on the top yeah. and the whole basin is filled with little plants as well and organic matter. Yeah. It drains in 12 hours. Well, yeah, I bet as the rain hardens up this, this base too, like it will hold the water. Well, yeah, but we want the organic matter. We want the plants to help it drain faster. Oh, okay. Um, because it'll still, because we have such epic rain events that when we get them they flow and the soil just can't handle you can't absorb all that immediately that's why we even have these things because runoff is a huge right is a real can't thing. soak in fast enough. so yeah, yeah but then when it fills up it will spill out and go over to the rest of the site yeah um but for this area it'll drain faster so you don't have as much you don't have as much uh, chance of getting breeding mosquito larvae for example right having a standing um, pool of water there. Mm -hmm. That organic matter will help infiltrate that water okay. even more quickly. Yep. So so now we know that our our swale is the right level basically. Yeah. So that's not what's stopping the water from coming in up here. Yeah. So that yeah. means we got to go up on the other property uh -huh. and see what's stopping it. Yeah. point we explored a completely new idea, a road diversion swale. Checking the water runoff on our adjoining road showed that it was running right next to our property and was naturally higher up on the contour. So we talked through a few options for directing that flow into our south side swale. Believe it or not, we were told that you don't need permits to do something like this, even on a county maintained road, as long as you aren't disrupting the natural flow of the water. However, we decided not to pursue this for a couple of reasons. First, this side of the swale is already doing great. It was filling up perfectly. Uh, secondly, if we cut under that fence, we would have to figure out a way to stop predators from coming underneath. And third, we felt like it was more important to focus our attention on why the other side of the swale wasn't filling up. Okay, so we're gonna go investigate on the property up behind us and see if we can figure out why the swale from the solar shed up to that corner isn't really getting much water in it. It's not really collecting what it should be because it is on contour and it's the right level. So let's go figure it out. We should play Mission Impossible. So there's a road that runs behind our property and it's, it's a road. It's barely a road, as you can see. There's like trees in the middle of it. But at some point, 20, 30 years ago, when they cut this road in, they bermed each side of it to help with water flow. And that didn't show up on our, our topo map. So, so you can see, well, you may not be able to see, but essentially there's a pretty big berm here that's gonna stop anything from up above us from actually going to our berm, which is right there. So that that's part of the problem is that this is catching it and funneling it down that way instead of that way. So yeah, um, it's definitely coming down this way. It's actually, did you see that? This is... Wow. There we have it. We kind of figured out that what was part of this drainage going this way is actually being funneled um, from, looks like the road grading and just this natural berm that was formed from that. Right. Um, to be pushed off this way. Right. And because we're at the top corner of the property, we don't have much of our property before we get to that swale. Yeah. So we're losing a lot of this this surface area because of this berm. It's slowing things down. Yeah. This could be a simple solution where um, it was only a four inch difference between that bottom section and the top of the berm there. Right. So you can just widen that out. It's a really nice gentle channel that opens up that berm and kind of starts to move that water 
Right, so way. we don't have to take the whole berm out. We, we just want to see if we can grab off of it yeah. and redirect it. It looks like this is going to have to be a project for another day. Now, you would think that our next step would be to plant trees, right? Not quite yet. Remember, we need to do that handwork on the berms and swales and smooth out those slopes. And when we do that, we need to be planting our grass seed in those slopes and mixing it into the dirt so that they don't blow away. And to hold the moisture in the soil so that that grass seed grows, we need some sort of mulch to put on top of it. Mulch in the desert? Yeah, it's not as easy as it sounds. And that is what we're going to try to figure out in the next video. We'll see you then. Oh,